sidetracked. Douglas was cross. He'd brought a small, strange purple engine up the valley to the mountain railway. As it was lowered onto its own rails, the engine sneered. A most unsatisfactory trip, he sniffed. I've never known such bumpy rails. I thought your controller had a handle on such matters. But then, I suppose, bigger isn't better after all. Glad to be rid of his load, Douglas puffed indignantly away. He didn't even whistle to Wilfred, passing with his coach. Welcome home, Shane. Do any, the engine interjected. Well, have it your way, then. Welcome home, do any, Wilfred chuckled as he hurried away. Shane Dooney said nothing. He noticed the new engines, Patrick, Alaric, and Eric, sat outside the shed, gossiping and blowing off steam. This did nothing to improve his mood. I tell you, Culty, he blathered, the standard of conduct has certainly slipped in our absence. I apologize for not returning sooner. I imagine you had quite the time with those ruffians. Not really, Caldy replied plainly. Patrick was quick to shape up, and the Ricks have been kind and quiet from the start. Quiet? Huh! <laughs> Shane Dooney snorted. That's not what I observed. The way they were howling yesterday. It's as if they're settling into their new home, Caldy interrupted. I agree. A terrible thing to happen. I don't admire your newfound sarcasm. Those youngsters have had more influence than I thought, Shane Dooney growled as he huffed away. The next morning, Shane was being readied for the day's work. As he dozed, Eric came to collect his coach for the first train. Nothing like a jaunt up the mountain when the dew's still fresh, eh, Shane? Dooney. Shane Dooney. That's my full name, youngling, and I expect you to remember it. Sir, yes, sir, Sergeant Doohickey, Eric smirked. But that goes for you, too. My nameplate says Eric, not youngling. Then I suggest, Eric, that you clean yourself up, Shane glared. For there are certain ways we conduct ourselves on mountain railways. Engines who get too bubbly, or cocky, don't last. Lucky for you, Driver gave me a wash just last night, so I'm very clean indeed, Eric laughed, hurrying to the station. Silly old doohickey, he thought. I learned plenty from the others. Besides, manager trusts me enough to take the first train of the day. With a full coach, he set off whistling louder than ever as he passed the shed. Shane Dooney had never scowled so hard. The skies were blue as Eric began his ascent, but once he passed Devil's Back, light mist rolled in. By the time they reached the top, he could see nothing beyond the Summit Station building. What a shame, the passengers sighed. The day was looking so lovely, We've nothing to take pictures of now. Seems it's just us, the station master replied. I phoned back down the line. They've still got clear skies. I know, Eric exclaimed. I'll take you back down to one of my favorite sites. So, after a small tea break, the passengers piled into the coach, and Eric hurried back down the line, halting at Scarloe Road Station. Here we are, he called. You'll get super pictures of the viaduct. The passengers were impressed with the views as their cameras clicked and flashed. Eric was pleased, but the station master eyed his pocket watch anxiously. You're cutting it close, mate, he told the driver. Shane Dooney's due up in a while. You might not make it down to the next passing loop. 
Eric saw how the passengers were enjoying themselves and didn't want to cut their trip short. Certainly not for Shane's sake. Oh, uh, I feel a bit uh, uh, short of steam, he groaned lamely. Could we rest just a bit longer? Old Doohickey can use the passing loop here to get around me. Seeing no issue with this, the station master went to set the points to the loop. Eric, content, turned his attention back to the passengers. It wasn't long before the tranquility was disturbed by the echo of a dutiful puffing. Eric braced himself as Shane Dooney stopped before the points, whistling insistently. Things certainly have changed in my absence, he fumed. I wasn't aware we could loiter on the line at our leisure. I'm not loitering, Eric retorted. I'm putting my passengers first. By putting my passengers second? Have you been away so long you forgot what signals mean? The points are set for you to go around me on the loop. You should be in the loop, young hooligan. That siding is not to be taken at speed, and I'm meant to have a clear run up. Shane Dooney turned his attention to Eric's passengers, whistling hoarsely. Ladies and gentlemen, your journey has come to an end. Return to your coach at once. Disappointed and annoyed, the passengers begrudgingly walked to the platform. And you, Shane glared, get into that loop at once. You go into the loop, Eric snapped, and stop bossing me about. You're not the manager. I'm wise enough to know the manager wouldn't approve of your silly actions. He won't approve of either side of this argument when he hears about it, and he will if you two don't sort yourselves out, interrupted their coaches. Begrudgingly, Eric moved into the loop, and Shane snorted away. Both engines arrived at their final stations very late, which ensured the manager learned of their feud. I am most disappointed in you both, he scolded when the engines returned to the shed. Eric, I appreciate your concern for our passengers' enjoyment, but you may not modify the timetable and block the line as you see fit. He turned to Shane Dooney. I find your new attitude most unbecoming, Shane. Experienced as you are, you have no right to give commands to other engines, and certainly not to our passengers. I expect the two of you shall mend your ways and put this silly quarrel to rest. Otherwise, you'll stay in the shed until it's resolved. He spun on his heel and strode to his office. The engines were speechless. It was Shane Dooney who broke the silence. I truly must apologize, youngling, he sighed. I haven't given you the warmest of welcomes. Passengers keep our railway running. To put their needs first was most exemplary of you. Shouldn't have been at the expense of blocking your path, Eric conceded. I'm sorry I was cheeky. It's thanks to you I even have a railway to call home. He paused. There is one more thing we need to clear the air about. What's that? Can't help but notice, Eric grinned. You didn't correct manager about your name. For the first time since he'd returned, Shane Dooney cracked a little smile. He was thankful none of the other engines were awake to see it.